and welcome to Let's Chat. On today's Daily Dose, I blogged about purpose of your workout. Mm. Mm -hmm. I like now, that one. Now, <laughs> I've been working out like a slave. She mm -hmm. looks fantastic. Congratulations. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Fabulous. And what did you think about the blog? Um, I think it's phenomenal because I think I know in my personal journey, um, I was consumed by trying to keep up with what the magazine said I should be. Um, I'm not this size. I don't look like that. I don't look like her. Um, oh, summer's coming. I need to hurry up and get ready for and get ready for beach body. Um, or, mm -hmm. you know, oh, yeah, definitely for this birthday. And there were all these different external things that I tried to use as motivation or thought, okay, yeah, that's what's going to get me going. But in fact, the reality became, why do I want to be healthy? Why do I want to be fit? And what is the greater purpose in that? So I really loved your blog because mm -hmm. it's everything that has driven me to do what I'm currently in the process of doing. Well, what inspired it was um, Tony Horton, the creator of P90X, was on Dr. Oz. And when he said it, like a light bulb went off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, his point was, don't just work out to prepare for that 20 year high school reunion. Or like you said, don't work out because summer's coming and you want a beach body. Then what mm -hmm. happens after summer? Right. Yeah. What's going to motivate you to maintain that body or that figure after summer? But is so P90X exactly? P you I'm said sorry? P90X? Yeah. Yes. He's a creator of P90X, but he has other plans. He has a 10 minute it's a workout miracle program. plan. It's a, okay. It's a workout program. A very, very crazy, extreme, extreme and intense, and intense workout intense. program. Okay. And it's wonderful. I did it for three weeks, got sick and... I, and uh, no, and I still have it. And I'm, <laughs> what wonderful. I'm doing is, you know, what he spoke about was modifying. Mm -hmm. You got to do things to modify and adjust. And it, it's, it's extremely intense. It's mm -hmm. like on the other end mm -hmm. of the spectrum. So you have to modify. So that's what I'm doing now. Instead of doing it six days a week, because that's what it calls for, I might do it mm -hmm. two days a week. I alternate right. because what you want to do is shock your muscles, mm. you know, surprise them, catch them off guard. Because mm -hmm. they do figure things out. Right. <laughs> right. Which is why people will do aerobics classes for years on end mm -hmm. and have no change and no difference. Right. It's mm -hmm. good for you, cardiovascular and all of those purposes. But if you're right. looking for a physical body change, mm -hmm. you have to continuously change your workout and shock your body because otherwise it gets accustomed. What so, I like about it is just the whole idea of not living in the future, living for the future. Mm -hmm. But this moment is worth you taking care of yourself right. now. Exactly. So even Brea. the psychology of it. I, right. I, exactly. And not just is, a workout, but also the way that you're eating, you know, because yeah. you can work out all right. you can. And if you're not eating the right foods, God, I'm so you proud of you. Still... Did you guys read the blog? I can see it. <laughs> <laughs> because that's exactly what I said. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're always focusing on, well, let's eat right because mm -hmm. we want to live to be a hundred. Well, right. we don't, uh, being a hundred is not promised to us. Mm -hmm. We don't know yeah. if we're going to be here tomorrow or next week. So what about focusing on those things that we're putting in our mouths today? today. Yeah. Think about the effect that it's going to have on your body today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And another thing that I liked, he mentioned the 90-10 rule, the diet plan, which is 90% healthy, eat 90% healthy, healthy, consume healthy things 90% of the time and mm -hmm. the 10% have fun, treat yourself, splurge. Right. He loves his chocolate chip cookies oh, and his brownies. Yeah, and, otherwise you feel deprived. Right. right. And, and you know that that will over, that's right. short lived. And of course, yeah. like you don't eat chocolate chip cookies every, every day, single day. Mm -hmm. But right. you know, once a week or maybe once every other week, you feel like a chocolate chip cookie, then have it. Mm -hmm. That was actually yeah. a big part of my change because I was very much one of those who deprive, deprive, deprive. If mm -hmm. I'm not depriving myself, I'm not going to get right. results, but that worked against me, not right. for mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. Um, so what we do and what we've adopted is all week long, um, six out of the seven days I eat healthy and Sunday is my splurge day, meaning I can have whatever I want. Awesome. Most of the time I don't. Yeah, but, you should appoint mm -hmm. a cheat day, which yeah. is really cool. But on That's Sunday nice. we go out, doesn't matter where I eat. And mind you, because I've been good, I don't. And the, don't last point, crazy. Crazy. the last point that he made was mark X's on the days that you've worked out. So if only 15 days are marked, that means the other 15 days you weren't doing anything. I yeah. loved it. It was so uh. in your face. Uh, it is <laughs> in your face. Anyway, um, we will be right back with our guest to talk about human trafficking. It's going to be a good one. You'll want to stay tuned. We'll be right back. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7 is one of my most favorite verses. And it tells us, for God did not give us a spirit of fear, but that of love, power, 
and self-control. Fear is a man-made emotion, one that God did not give us, and we face unknown situations every day. But if we go into that situation knowing that God already has a plan for it, and you cast that fear to the devil, which is where it came from, then the rest is so simple. John 3:16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that whoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. What an amazing concept to know that God, King of the universe, allowed his only son to come to this sinful earth to save you and me. And listen to this. And all we have to do is just believe in the God of heaven. Allow him into our lives. Allow him to show us the way that we need to go. And guess what? We will be able to live with him forever. Now, isn't that something we should work diligently towards? Internet television, the wave of the future has begun. It's here. It's free. It's awesome. It's ministry. It's doerstv.com. Doing TV God's way. Visit today at doerstv.com. A one of a kind internet TV network with 21 channels of unique Christian programming at the click of a mouse. Go to doerstv.com and be blessed with Christian reality TV 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Visit doerstv.com today. God has given us a specific set of rules for us to follow. And some of them, even the most basic, at times can seem nearly impossible to follow. Even ones like honoring our own parents. When it gets hard for us, we can say things like, oh, well, they don't deserve it, or they don't know what I'm going through. God has already responded to any of our excuses. Deuteronomy 30.11 says, The commands I give you today are not too hard for you. It is not beyond what you can do. And God, just like parents, set rules for our own good. And the more we follow them, the better we'll be. So remember, even it may p seem impossible to love that little sibling of yours, it's not. Welcome back. Today we are joined by a very special guest, Miss Diana Simone. Did I say it right? You said it right. Okay, good. I didn't butcher it because I know there were a lot of enunciations for it. Um, and you're going to talk to us about human trafficking and that it's a bigger problem than we think and not just in other countries, but right here in our very own backyard. Yes, it is. There are about a million. We actually work in child trafficking, so the numbers I'm giving you are, are specifically for children. But it's one million children a year oh. are trafficked. Oh wow. And that's in addition to the ones that have been already enslaved. So it's, it's a uh, you know a supply and demand thing. I must tell you, um, we were all eagerly anticipating this show because within the last, I want to say three, maybe four days, I've seen three different programs on human trafficking. Mm -hmm. And it's disgusting. It mm -hmm. saddens my heart. I, you know, you watch it and you're in awe at how could this be happening. And the last one I saw was just last night, as a matter of fact. Um, Lisa Ling, who's a correspondent mm -hmm. for Oprah, mm -hmm. she did a show, you know, they did a sting operation and six blocks from the Capitol building, mm -hmm. they were staking out the John Doe's uh -huh. looking for these little girls. Mm -hmm. And when it started, you know, the girls were older. They were like 17 and 18. And at five o'clock in the morning, when they called it a wrap, they saw a 12 year old girl. Well, the, um, average, age, her. the average age of a, um, someone who's trafficked in the U.S. in the U.S. is 11. 11. Oh my 11. Goodness. So that means there are many under under 11 yeah you're right if that's the average age there yeah. could be much younger oh my yeah. goodness. and do you happen to know that statistic for around the world uh i don't know what it is but it's probably, it's probably about the same. the same it may even be younger i first learned about trafficking child trafficking when i was in india in 2001 and at that point there was hardly any talk of it at all and i mm -hmm. i kept hearing the expression child slaves and child prostitutes and I thought it was a child here a child there but my world was about to get rocked we were going through with one of my contacts I was there doing a story on forced prostitution of women so we were in the red light district and my contact said to me 
be very careful taking a picture because if the pimps see you, they'll break the windows of the van and steal the camera. Oh. But he said, I want you to see in the second story window, do you see the cages? Oh and I God. looked and I said, cages? And I could clearly see the outline of them. Oh. And I said, what is in the cages? And he said, five-year-old girls. Oh they're God. smuggled across the border from oh. Nepal and they're oh. held in these cages for 30 days oh. while they're tortured, raped, urinated upon, starved, abused, everything until oh. they no longer have a will to rebel and then they're fit to be child slaves. Hey. So I got my picture oh. and I call that the photo that changed my world because I came home and I couldn't stop thinking about what I had seen. Mm -hmm. And I already had a nonprofit that was helping kids, but we were pretty general at that mm. point. So within an, a couple of years later, we knew that that was our, what our yeah. focus would be to stop child trafficking. It wow. is incredible how little you hear about it. Just doing a little bit of research over these last few months since I come to really find out how prevalent it is, it's not talked about that mm -hmm. much, especially the fact that it's happening right here yes. and how prevalent it is around the world. And it seems like in a situation, wouldn't you say knowledge is power or what is the biggest deterrent? What can we do? That I totally agree with you, Britta. That is the, the, the biggest deterrent. Our goal, we work in the area of awareness and prevention, uh -huh. and our goal is to get to the kids before the traffickers do. And wherever there's been awareness training, mm -hmm. the rate of trafficking plummets. There's just wow. not enough and That's not incredible. in the languages of, of the children who need it most. So that's what we've done. We've created a wordless book and a curriculum to go along with it. And it's wordless, of course, so we don't have to translate it into thousands oh, of languages. Yeah. Wow. So uh, we're testing it now in five different countries in Russia, Thailand, Philippines, Bulgaria, and India. Oh. And as soon as we get the test results back, will be able to start distributing it all over the world. Diana, tell us a little bit about who the does are and, and where is the money coming from? What kind of money are we talking about? We're talking $37 billion a year. <gasps> industry. Industry. It is the second highest grossing form of illegal industry on the planet. Did you say planet. billion or million? Billion. Billion. $37 billion. Wow. It, it's organized crime. Organized crime is involved because it's so lucrative. Mm -hmm. It's it's second only to illegal drugs. It used I to be third say, to illegal wow. arms. Oh. And in fact, if you look on our website on the video, it still says third because that's how recently like it was third. Switched now over. it's second, and in some parts of the world, it's first. So in it's Eastern growing. Europe, it's oh. first, and it's so lucrative with so little risk because you could sell a bag of drugs once but you could sell a child or a okay. woman over and, and over and times. over and very little risk. Now, <clears throat> there's so much money involved, which means that the people that are actually committing these crimes with these innocent people are people with money. Yes, although it doesn't take that much money for one child for one hour. It's not, mm. you know, it's not hundreds and hundreds of dollars. It, it varies all over the world. Wow. But it's it's not an expensive pastime, sad to say. But again, like you said, with a with once you numbers. sell a drug, that's it. Now you have to reproduce. But with a child, you know, that's mm -hmm. one hour, and then I'm sure there's another hour, and so on and so forth. There are forty yeah. hours a night. Forty hours. Forty oh, a hours night for this child. Forty oh. customers a night for a five-year-old. For one five-year-old. No. <laughs> yeah. And she's not dead after. It, well, she doesn't live very long. Oh, yeah, the, the life expectancy of these children is not very long. Either they die of AIDS or another disease or just abuse. I mean, abuse. how could a child's body oh. take that? You know, this is what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. You hear this and you can't fathom. Who does this? Mm -hmm. A sick individual, obviously, mm -hmm. but how to a five year old child? Like, mm -hmm. what, what are you getting in return? What's this? I, I just, I, it's, uh, I can't it's unimaginable. I it's just absolutely can't. unimaginable. I have a question real quick mm -hmm. because I know within the United States you have the pedophile communities and such and such. Are they some of the top participants in this trafficking experience? Is that a link 
because I know that's profound. It, it, it is a link, and pornography is a link, but it's the person on the street. It's, wow. and, and it's not, you know, we can blame the men all we want. Mm -hmm. They may be the customers, but there are more women brothel owners than men. So, wow. yeah, oh and gosh. I mean, I'm sure a lot of these are, are mothers too. So, uh, to give you another idea of how much organized crime is involved, this just happened two weeks ago in the Philippines where we're testing, the village where we're testing. They've had many, many children taken. And uh, the, the woman who is leading our project there, who's heading up the, the teaching, she was attacked by someone who broke one of her ribs. He was arrested for trafficking. She kept on going. I mean, this woman is my hero. Wow. She kept on going. On, uh, on a Friday, they started teaching Born to Fly in the village. On Tuesday, a child, another child was kidnapped. Now remember, there have been many children kidnapped. Mm -hmm. This one, his body was returned to the village with all his organs removed and his head mm -hmm. cut off. And it was a warning to yeah. stop, but they're not stopping. They're, they're, yeah. they're going. So to me, that was okay. It's really nice when the traffickers tell you you're, you're on the right path. You're, you're really threatening us now. That's, they're angry because you're having an effect. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what's happening. Oh my goodness. And in Russia, Russia where we're teaching also organized crime is involved. Rosie there. just said she, she's um, speechless. I can't even. Yeah. yeah. Well, How do you respond oh, to, to that? that? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, anyway. What can we do? Like, hold your, th hold that question, Rosie. We're going to take a break and we're going to come oh. back, come right back. But absolutely. What can we do to help yeah. stop this? We'll be right back. Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Are there times where you feel as though you can't go on? You think, I can't do this anymore. I can't make this happen or work for me? Well, the problem is we keep saying we can't. But if we read the verse, it says, I can through Christ. If we remember God is a God who can, then the doing will come with the strength that he gives us. Who is your favorite singer? They have a pretty awesome voice, don't they? But what if I told you that God had a pretty amazing voice himself? Well, he does. Psalm 29, 4 says, The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. And what's better than having an amazing voice? Using it. And God loves to use his voice to talk with us. And aside from using his voice, he loves to hear us use our own, to talk to Him. So take time to talk with God. Talk and listen to God's majestic voice. Welcome back. If you're just joining us today, we are speaking with Diana Simone, and she's talking to us about human trafficking, something that's very serious and is happening right here in the United States. Tell us more about that, Diana. There are about 100,000 children a year, just, just children, trafficked in the U.S., and that's across our borders and within our borders. There are, are children brought into the U.S. from other countries. There are American children who are trafficked, and then there are American children who are trafficked out of out. the U.S. Oh, now, you know how, I mean, because we're always having Amber Alerts and worrying about children that are disappearing and are we going to find them and this and that and whatever. Is that a large percentage of what we're talking about that get trafficked here within the, are, are those part of that? that? Those are part of that. And there are many right. other forms that it takes. Runaways in the U.S., teena a teenager who runs away mm. uh, within 48 hours, she or he will be approached by traffickers and usually runaways don't remember to pack a bag in their debit card, daddy's yeah. debit card, so they don't have any money, they don't have any <sighs> way to make money, so the traffickers come and offer them a way to make money. So, And they can be sneaky too. I've heard of girls thinking they were going to a modeling audition and not having the awareness to know, well, it shouldn't be at this person's apartment. And then they get there. And I, I heard a specific story a few months ago about somebody in Orlando. And luckily, I guess she was able to escape. But yes, even yeah. at the time, I remembered hearing it saying, well, why'd you go there? And that was before I really started looking into trafficking. And then I realized that once they have you, they, you're not free to go. Mm -hmm. Have and you guys seen the movie Taken? Mm-hmm. 
Have you seen it? I before? haven't, actually. You know, I've seen that movie several times, and it's pretty graphic in the sense of what happens. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in the movie it says, the father of the child that was kidnapped, if you're not found in 72 hours, the chance mm -hmm. of finding them are done. Is that pretty accurate? I don't know. I, I Like, is there a time frame? Is there a time, if, if the person is missing today, like between now and when do we stand the best chance of finding them and them not having been trafficked? I, I don't have any, a specific number, but obviously the sooner you can, yeah. the better. And, and also what happens that you were alluding to is that the, the, either the child or the adult becomes bonded to the kidnapper, the Stockholm Syndrome. And that's why mm -hmm. it's a, the, someone who does do rescues told me this one time and it's just stuck with me. She said, it's easy to rescue a child who wants to be rescued, but these children don't want to be rescued. Mm -hmm. And particularly, not so much in this country, if, if they're Americans, if they're brought in from another country and they're in a country where they're, their police department, they're, they're taught to be very suspicious. So mm -hmm. when they come here, their, their captors tell them, you do not want to run away. Um, the police here are awful or whatever, and they don't know about 911. They 9 pretty much manipulate. Uh -huh. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Brainwash them, if anything. No. They're brainwashed to believe They're that's right. a better lifestyle, yes. isn't yeah. it? Yeah, and that's why even when a child or an adult is rescued, it's not just a matter of, you know, giving them a warm place to, to stay. They, I mean, you, we can't even imagine the psychological oh trauma uh. that they've gone through and the healing. That and they need. Speaking of rescue, mm -hmm. I understand that there are only 10 rescue homes in the country. Is that true? I, I don't have the exact number, but there are very, very few in the U.S. And the problem is that funding? The, the funding yeah. that's allocated by the government is allocated only to victims who are from other countries. It's oh, just a, a glitch in the law. We're trying to get no, that changed. Wow. So the shelters that are available are not for American. U.S. citizens. US citizens. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Wow. Nice. We actually have one in Florida. There oh. is one in Florida. It's okay. one of the, the few in the Isn't country. there a large percentage of trafficking that actually happens out of the state of Florida? Florida is a big... I mean, where Please I never, tell me it's not the biggest. I don't not know that, who I mean, is the biggest. I was just about to say, I don't... I don't. Yeah, I see this all the time on Twitter. Oh, I just found out Indiana, where the person lives, mm -hmm. is the biggest, or Michigan is the biggest, and it's impossible. How I, heard, I did hear Michigan quantify, yeah, but yeah. Florida is. There is a lot of trafficking here. First of all, because we're all border, right. mm -hmm. right. all border, yeah, right, and mm -hmm. um, because of our uh, uh, the entertainment industry here, mm -hmm. for many many reasons, runaways come here. Wow, where you know, runaways don't want to go to. Freezing cold. Right. They want to come to Florida. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. back to the safe home. Are you allowed to say what that home is? The name of yes. it? I, I can't say that, but I, I can say that's pretty new and they're really focused just on trafficking victims because what happens is when the police rescue someone, you know, the, if it's a, a U.S. citizen, okay, they speak English. If she's from another country oh. and they put her in a domestic abuse shelter, mm -hmm. They're not equipped. They don't have language uh, interpreters, and it's a whole different mm. thing. That what a she vicious needs. cycle! Yeah, it's like never ending for this victim. Yeah. And oh, until recently, so. the law, even in the U.S., it's still this way in many countries. Even in the U.S., she was the the um, the one who got arrested. Her customer yes. was free, yes. and yes. she oh, was arrested. My. Oh. Technically, yes. she did break the law, but she was she forced was, to break the yeah. law. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that was on the Lisa Ling uh, So this is a really big thing to to um, <sighs> show that the the victims are in fact victims, and to treat them that way. Right, yeah. they're not making this choice like so many people. Right. view it right mm -hmm. now your book um it's called born to fly mm -hmm. and it's a wordless book for children yes and so the idea is to educate them so that they know this what to look for yes and we wanted to write it as something that would appeal to little kids as well as teenagers so the whole thing is an allegory it's the story about a butter a caterpillar who has a dream to fly 
And in her quest to follow her dream, she has to solve a riddle. Mm -hmm. And it's, there's a secret scroll and a legend and all of this. <laughs> so the answer to the riddle is the, the takeaway from the book. There are five takeaways. The riddle has five parts to it. So that's what the curriculum is set up as. Mm -hmm. We teach, um, we have a six day or six week succession program. Okay. And it's five, of, five for the takeaways. And then we have a commitment ceremony at the end where the kids commit not to be trafficked. Wow. Okay. Wow. wow. Yeah. Did you? I did. I, you know, I just have to say, um, I was going to ask, but you kind of answered that, you know, what to do. I mean, we're definitely bringing awareness, and I know that's one way that we can help. Um, educating our children, of course, I know might be another way of helping, but, you know, just as believers, I just want to say that um, we need to come together and pray. Mm -hmm. You know, literally pray. This is something that should be in our minds when we're praying. I mean, I know that my church, my church does about 100, we're a house of prayer, so they do about 100 hours of prayer, and one of their topics is human trafficking. Mm -hmm. And um, literally, they've gone, gone to the streets of Miami and having people just pray. So I know that prayer, it's huge. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, the you're houses absolutely of prayer right. have been great. And, and Exodus Cry, mm -hmm. International House of Prayer mm -hmm. in Kansas City, their website is amazing with information about different countries and specific mm -hmm. prayer points. Yeah, Diana. Thank you for the houses of prayer. <laughs> As always, you know, we could sit here and talk all day, but in 10 seconds, tell us something poignant that we can do? What can we do to help prevent this? Is there something that you can pinpoint? I think what Rosie just said about the prayer is key. Since um, there has been so much prayer, there's been, there have been a lot more rescues, a lot, mm -hmm. just a lot more organizations and, and the awareness. Well, thank you so much. We're definitely going to Oh, you can I have to out. inhale and Are exhale. That was a lot to take in. Diana, thank you so much for being here. Thank we you. really uh, enjoyed having you and the information you've provided. And we'll put that information on Facebook, too. Absolutely. Go to the website, borntofly.org. We'll see you next time on Let's Chat. Bye.